What's up my podcast listeners and viewers if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, this is your host, Rafael Majeshevsky, and this is going to be a special edition of the podca podcast, can't speak today, wow, and YouTube vlog video thing that I've been doing, but um, we are going to do a comprehensive tutorial on the Turkish getup because I do have a tutorial on my YouTube channel, um, but it's about five minutes and I really want to take the time and crush this thing out step by step and I'm going to be moving the camera a lot if you're watching. Um, for the listeners, I'm going to be as descriptive as possible because obviously if you're not watching, you're going to kind of miss the point, but if you know what the Turkish getup uh, exercise is, um, you'll kind of be able to follow along and understand. So we've already done a whiteboard session on the benefits of the Turkish getup. We don't need to go any further into that because if you are an avid listener, follow over my content, you understand all that. Um, so the next step is now putting into practice and I wanted to showcase what we could achieve with the Turkish getup step by step. What are the most common mistakes? What, you know, most people see, well, what I see that most people do, um, and where to kind of fine tune things and how we can use the Turkish getup as a assessment tool. So without further ado, we're going to get into it, but we got to do some shout outs. So new number one city, all the way in the state of Illinois, the city of Dixon. Shout out to everyone in Dixon listening to my show. Super awesome to see you guys up there. And number two, again, the city of Jar in Norway. Shout out to all my Norwegian listeners. That's super cool. Um, and number three, here in Canada, the city of Lethbridge. Shout out to everyone in Canada listening to my show. Super awesome. So let's get started. Um, Turkish getup. As you recall, the get up itself kind of stems from a developmental standpoint um, how a toddler develops and it all starts with lying down in a supine position so with the get up you're starting on your back so if you imagine yourself lying down super easy right lying down get to lie down for the sake of this video I am gonna go right leg straight out left leg is bent, left arm out to the side, and right hand is going to be up. And I always coach with the fist because I want people to think about I'm holding a kettlebell. And this is actually the first point that I'm going to get into. Um, I never start anyone with weight if they've never done the Turkish get up to a point where I will, this is how I break it down. I will s go through the phases with you. And phase one is up to the hand, similar to the position I am in right now. Um, and I spent about four weeks there with people, practicing it every single week. Phase two is the like hip bridge, hip lift with the legs sweeping under. And then phase three is the entire get up from top to bottom. So I spend four weeks at each phase and essentially 12 weeks of time will go by before I give them a weight and then what I'll do to challenge them my that being uh, my clients is that by the time they get to phase three they're doing the full get up and back down my assessment to see if they're ready to hold a weight is they're gonna either put the shoe on their fist or a yoga block without you know using their thumb or anything like that to cheat um, this one will slow down the entire getup itself and showcase all the little weak spots. Because a lot of times when I teach the getup, people, you know, even if I tell them, like, slow down, slow down, slow down, they will still go fast no matter what. I would have to physically hit them in order for them to stop moving so fast. But the moment I put their shoe on their fist or, you know, yoga block on their fist, everything slows down and they feel where they need to work on. The moment they can go all the way up through the getup and all the way back down with the shoe or the yoga block on their fist, that's when I will give them uh, a weight. 
So, little side note. Now, we are lying down on our back. Right leg out to the side, left leg is bent, right arm out to the side, left hand up and towards the ceiling and in a fist. In this position, I always start with, all right people, your right leg is gonna be generically at a 45. Your hand, your right hand, again, is gonna be generically at a 45 degree angle. The left hand into the fist. Your eyes are always gonna be pointed at the fist at all times until I tell you to change it. I don't know why I paused for so long. But from this initial point, we're gonna take a deep diaphragmic breath in order to create enough, enough intra-abdominal pressure to stabilize this entire section for us to roll over. If you do not know how to utilize a diaphragmic breath, the Turkish getup is not gonna be your best choice of tools to train with, right? It all starts here. And I will tell you why in a second. So. The first phase is gonna go onto the elbow and onto the hand. So deep breath in, I hold it, and as I exhale is when I roll to the elbow. So you can already see that my chest is in line with my two shoulders, with my hand up in the fist and my other hand on the ground. From this position, I'm gonna come up towards my right hand, and again, my chest is up and my left hand is in a fist. This entire motion that I just did, my eyes have not left my fist. All right? The moment your eyes start to wander in different directions other than your fist that's holding your pretend kettlebell, if you were to have weight and I was looking over to my right, I don't know where my left arm is in time and space, so most likely the kettlebell is going to eventually like peer over this way or this way. I'm going to lose joint centration of my shoulder, and worst case scenario, the bell falls on me or I hurt my shoulder. Where people screw up in this first phase is as they come across to the elbow, they don't have this flat chest, neutral chest with both shoulders in line. They kind of fall into their right shoulder. The, the right shoulder kind of falls into an anterior tilt. And now they have all this pressure in that front of the shoulder and it's a bad habit to kind of fall into. The more they fall into this, the more the chest is gonna cave and now that bell is gonna now kind of fall forward as well and it's just gonna fall apart. Now, another thing with the shoulder, the moment I come up towards the hand, the same thing usually will happen is that shoulder is gonna collapse forward. So I always tell people, think of getting a centrated joint or really simply chest up. The moment you go chest up, shoulder falls into play, a place. It's very similar to if I was doing a farmer carry, the last thing my body wants to do is round my shoulders forward because of the weight. It's not gonna feel that good but it's gonna naturally wanna go back if the weight's heavy enough. So in the get up, you don't really get that same um, sense of feeling. You have to find it with your shoulder. And a lot of times this bit can be super awkward. People are like, eh, I don't really know what I'm doing and they do this weird thing that I'm doing. So that being said, this arm, I always start people with a 45 degree angle, the right hand on the ground. And it all depends on the person's anatomy. So obviously I don't get to work with people that are like me where I have really good shoulders and we have to find kind of like a middle ground of where this arm, this right arm is gonna be placed. So say I have my client or person I'm working with go up to their elbow, it's all kind of all over the place, they can't find that position, they get onto the hand, it's even worse. Then I'm like, okay, let's restart and let's try having that right arm further out to like more of a 90 degree angle. And maybe that is where they're like, oh, that feels so much better. And now they can come up to the, towards the hand. 
right? Same goes. It's just finding that angle that works best for the person's shoulder because everyone's shoulder is built a little bit differently. And then if you're a person that sits at the desk all the time, it's going to need some work, right? So it's always about finding the angle that works best for you and your client. So this right arm, totally up to you where you want to put it. Now, the next thing, as I come up to the elbow, sometimes the issue is when they come up, no matter where they place that hand in the very beginning of the get up, it's still going to feel awkward. So sometimes on that elbow, I'll tell people to either take that right hand and swivel it out and then come up and then they're like, oh, that made it a lot easier. Or they can, you know, swivel it in and then come up and they're like, oh, that's a lot better. So now you have another option based on someone's anatomy. You can rotate the elbow into the different positions so that when you come up onto the hand, it's a different angle for the shoulder to be placed in. So you can already see there's so many different little variations in just this first phase and I haven't moved on to other things that we can play around with. That being said, this also shows you what's going on with this person's shoulder. If I know that no matter what is going on with all these different variations for this hand, then I have a lot of work to do with this person to ensure that they you know, get better shoulder mobility. And sometimes it just comes in time. Like, you know, I create a program for somebody and I want them to utilize a Turkish getup and I know their shoulders are not the best, but in conjunction with the Turkish getup, maybe I have them doing a shit ton of shoulder cars, scapular cars, shoulder external rotation, pails and rails, that kind of stuff. And eventually will come in time and that get up's gonna look a lot cleaner, right? So the next thing I wanna play, place an emphasis is this right leg. The biggest mistake or, you know, thing that I see with the get up is this leg popping up when someone's trying to come across, they do this thing, right? The moment they take that deep breath in, they exhale, they come to the elbow, the right leg pops up and then they're here. What that tells me is that they did not want, number one, did not do a proper diaphragmic breath to utilize that stiffness, that stability, that tension to come across. Somewhere there was an energy leak and now when this leg pops up, think about it, what, what is this motion? This is hip flexion. That means my hip flexors are pulling my torso up, right? And if you think about it, you're like psoas major, that big, big, big hip flexor. It connects right underneath that diaphragm. So that's why a lot of people end up looking like this to get up and it's a struggle. So what that means is that a person's core might not be strong enough. They still don't know how to breathe properly. So they need to kind of go back to the foundations of learning how to utilize a diaphragmic breath, some basic dead bug progressions, some basic bird dog progressions, things like that, and then come back here. A lot of times I'll see on Instagram or Facebook, people that are not kettlebell instructors um, that think they are able to do kettlebell workouts and they do like heavy get-ups and super sloppy, and their entire leg pops up every single time. They're just like muscling it through. And then you wonder why people have low back pain trying to do swings and Turkish get-ups. So sometimes it's just about teaching a person how to create tension in the get-up because it is a dynamic movement, but you can add parts of it with a more um, tension-based uh, approach. So, and I'm gonna move back to the arm in a second too about that. So in this position, when I see that right leg pop up, sometimes it's as simple as like telling, hey, when you roll across to the get up, I want you to drive your heel into the ground as hard as possible. So when they come across with that added tension of their heel, now they kind of created this chain of tension in order to come up. That being said, you can also do that with another body part. If you remember correctly, you have your right leg straight out, adding that tension. Your right arm is also into the ground. So I always coach the hand being pushed into the ground at the same time as the heel. So now they have more tension driving in. So you're using your hand, you're using your heel. But the other thing too is 
the elbow. As you're rolling to the elbow, I tell people, think of pulling your elbow back into the ground like you're trying to like rip the ground apart. And that engages that lat and teres major to kind of pull you through. Like kind of doing like a, like a lat pull down or pull up uh, motion, you're actually pulling yourself up. Right? It's not so much I'm rolling over, I'm actually pulling myself up into that position. Right? So now that we have all those um, tension-based um, approaches, the getup becomes a little bit easier in that initial position. And in my opinion, the first phase is the hardest phase because you're going from like a non-supported position that requires now a lot of support mobility, stability, and strength all at the same time to get the whole process started. Because remember, an object in motion is a lot easier to move than an object that's not in motion, right? It's basic physics, I think. I can't remember. I did terrible in physics. But um, yeah, so also with the leg, similar to the arm, it all depends on the position. So sometimes you'll see people with really, really tight hips or hip stuff, sometimes that 45 is not gonna feel good. They'll pop up, it's gonna like fall apart and collapse. So you're gonna have to find different angles where the leg can go. Like there's nothing wrong with having the leg straight in order for you to do a get up, right? Like there's no rule against it. You can use whatever angle you need in order to get there. Um, sometimes what you'll get is when people are in this abduct position of their leg and they try to come across, they're like TFL and hip flexor can start cramping because they're just not used to this position. Um, another thing that I've seen is people with really tight hamstrings, they can't lock out their knee in this extended position. So having a slight bend in the knee Again, not a big deal to get through the getup. Like you gotta work with what you got. A lot of times people try to put that square peg in the round hole constantly and they're left with painful, painful patterns and they end up with fucking shit that they don't want. Um, that being said, sometimes if the shoulders are not there when it comes to the getup, I will sometimes leave the person there for another four weeks um, doing the getup. So here's an example. Most people with shoulder issues, they need shoulder stability. Sometimes I will use the Turkish getup just phase one for like eight to 12 weeks for this one particular person that needs a lot of stability in their shoulders, but they don't have the mobility to go overhead because as we progress, and the get up, we need a lot of more, like a lot more range of motion, right? And if someone's overhead looks like this, like I melt the candle, my elbows bend, there's no purpose of me doing the get up at that point, especially in the loaded position, right? I'm just feeding the fuel to the dumpster fire of a shoulder. Um, so sometimes I will like do the four weeks and I know that, hey, their shoulder flexion is not the greatest. We're gonna stay another four weeks, but now I'm gonna add, you know, the yoga block, the shoe, whatever, to add the little bit of um, feedback to see if they can keep everything else in integrity as they uh, progress. And then maybe the next phase is where I give them a kettlebell, or maybe in that phase after they do their first week with the yoga block, shoe, whatever, so easy, it's like, okay, let's load it now and get really strong at it and then say like their shoulder mobility is still not the greatest and I can't get them into that overhead position, then I will give them the kettlebell in a bottoms up position to challenge the shoulder a little bit more, right? So this is where you can utilize the get up in so many different ways, right? Um, that being said, we are gonna go into phase two. I'm really hoping that I'm gonna get this under an hour because we're already at 20 minutes. So. From phase one, I want to make sure I'm in the shot here. Left leg bent, right leg straight out, right arm straight out, left arm up towards the ceiling in a fist holding my pretend kettlebell. Deep breath in, exhale. I'm on my elbow. I come up to my hand. From here, I'm sliding my hand in close to my torso slash hip. 
The reason behind that is the next step is I'm going to push my hips up towards the ceiling into the high bridge. And from here, my right leg goes underneath my entire body. This is phase two. The way I would come back is the same way I came in. Sweep that leg out, slide my hand to where it was, back onto the elbow, and then back down. All right, that's phase two. I'm gonna move the camera a little bit so you can see a little bit a higher angle. Um, there's a lot of stuff that has to happen in this phase and a lot of stuff can go wrong. So, number one, the eyes. Remember when I said that earlier? People will come through, they're ready, and the moment they come up and now they have to bring this right leg underneath, they look down on their leg to make sure they're placing it. And it's like, hello, what's happening with my left arm with this imaginary kettlebell? If I had a kettlebell and I look down where my leg is, this bell's going down to the ground. So at this point, I am still looking at my hand the entire time, all right? So with that being said, we're gonna come back to all that. We need to focus on this right arm. So, if you remember, deep breath in. Exhale hard to the elbow. Chest is up, shoulders are in line. I extend the arm. From here, if I did not slide this right hand close to my torso and hip, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have not, I'm not gonna have enough hip extension to get my arm through, right? The moment I slide this arm in, closer to my torso and hip, boom, I can get my hips so much higher to have so much room for my right leg to sweep underneath, right? So just like I said in phase one, the shoulder is gonna do this weird thing, right? It's not gonna know where to go forward or back or what's neutral. So when you slide that arm in, you gotta do the same thing, keeping that chest up shoulder in that centrated position in order to be able to lift yourself up. Because remember, what if I was holding a 24 kilo kettlebell and this shoulder wasn't in line the way it should be and I left it out here, now I'm not in a straight line. Like you can even see in the camera, like that does not look good, right? You wanna find a position where you can place that shoulder in a centrated position in relation with the hand and with the other hand towards the ceiling. That being said, again, everyone has different shoulders. So sometimes you don't have to go as close to the hip as possible. You can go a little bit further away, right? Now, when you have enough hip extension, this leg just slides right underneath the leg, uh, the body so easily. But what you will see is people not having enough hip extension, they don't go high enough, and they almost like drag this leg underneath to try to get it underneath, right? So it can just be a coaching thing, or now it becomes your assessment and going, okay, I lack hip extension. I need to do exercises that will give me more hip extension, especially in my warm up. Maybe I pay attention to my TFL, hip flexors, my breathing in my soft tissue work before a workout to ensure that when I get to this point, I have enough hip extension to get my leg underneath. This is where a lot of people will um, screw up or have difficulty performing this movement. The other thing in that transition, there's a lot of stuff that can happen in that transition. So I'm about to lift my hip up and grab that leg underneath me. Sometimes when people come up, they don't really know where to place this right knee. Sometimes they cut it too short. Sometimes they go too far back. Sometimes they go too far back this way. They go too close this way and they're all bunched up. So the best way, just like any other exercise, if I were to not stack my joints upon each other, things fall apart. So in this case, I want to get my right knee in line with my right hip. Right? So now when I'm holding a kettlebell in my left arm, like I am solid, right? I'm not going anywhere. I'm gonna move this arm so it looks a little bit better. So now in this tripod position, essentially, 
I'm sturdy. Like I could have a hundred pounds here and I'm not going anywhere because I'm stable and stacked, right? Another weird thing that I've seen is with this right foot, if you can see behind me, people won't have it in line with the knee. They'll kind of do this thing or have it too close this way. Like just have it right here, stacked and ready to go. All right. So now the other thing that I see in that transition that happens so much, Again, it can be a hip extension thing. It could be an ankle mobility thing. It can just be a motor control thing. But a lot of times when people try to come up, this left heel for some reason will come up for them to get through. It could just be a you know, conscious thing that, hey, my right heel is gonna be coming through and I don't wanna hit my leg, which will happen sometimes. People will come and like kick their own ankle to come through. And again, it'll be a hip mobility thing, neuromuscular thing, hip extension thing, and it can also be an adductor thing. So that's my next point. So you can already see there's a lot of stuff that's required to perform a really good looking Turkish getup, right? So this is why too, I spend so much time without waiting it, because it's just similar to like, hey, my you know squat mechanics look like shit so yeah let's load it with a fucking barbell on my back no it's fucking stupid you want to you know be able to squat with your own body weight without looking like a melted candle then like going to the thought process of like no I'm fucking put a barbell on your back 135 it's just gonna self-correct like no fuck that shit you're gonna learn the way it's supposed to look like body weight and then add load to it. If you can't control it with your own body weight and your own arms and legs, like what are the odds of it looking any better with weight? Um, tangent, totally awesome. So I'm going back to my transition. As I'm bringing my right leg underneath, this left knee will sometimes just collapse in like this. A lot of times people have really tight adductors and they don't have enough hip external rotation to push this out. And in this position, like if you really think about it, you need adequate external rotation of this hip to showcase, you know, a solid foundation with a weight above your head at this point, right? Um, so sometimes like I even do this as a warm up exercise, like in this little tripod position, I will throw in some T-spine mobility while coaching to push this knee out to get a little bit more external rotation, right? You can utilize all these different positions that the getup provides as a secondary exercise. A lot of times people will, you'll see online, will break up the getup like I am, but add a little twist to it, a little mobility to it, or whatever it is to help promote all the muscles involved um, to stay a little bit more limber, more flexible, or whatever you want to call it. Um, that being said, that second phase requires a lot, right? A lot. And again, just like phase one, I might extend it for another four weeks. You know, maybe this is where kind of similar to phase one, I give them the shoe to get them whatever, right? Because again, the shoulder doesn't need that much flexion um, ability in this position. So sometimes, you know, if I have that person with a shoulder issue, again, I spend another four weeks, their shoulder mobility improves, and now we're going to go up to the next position. Before I move on, um, I'm going to do the first kind of transition phase, um, at this angle, and then I'm going to go change the camera angle to make sure you can see everything. So, to summarize those first two um, phases. So I'm lying back on my back, right leg is out, right arm's out, left knee is bent. And another thing to say, if you were to use the wrong side, it's gonna feel super challenging to come across and it'll feel super awkward. That's how you know if you did it wrong. And clients do that all the time. They forget you know, left and right all the time. So keep that in mind. All right, we're back to the start. I am taking that deep breath in, exhaling hard onto the elbow. Chest is up, shoulders in line. I come up onto the hand, slide that hand, hand hind, <laughs> as close as possible to my torso, high bridge with those hips, 
sweep the leg underneath. I'm in this little tripod position, I'm sturdy. From here, how I'm gonna get to the top, I'm gonna shift my hips to my right heel. And this is super important. So now when I can come up into my hips, I'm literally doing a hip hinge, AKA the deadlift with my hips. Whereas if I was here before and now trying to come up, I'm kind of like using my QL and like okay, and obliques just to lift up this entire weight. Whereas I could use my hips to stabilize and you know, I have a lot more musculature through my hips to lift and use that motion than my entire torso coming up. So this is where I'm going to adjust the camera a bit. So I am done. And again, at home, I always use a yoga mat because the getup tends to be hazardous on knees. So if you have a really thin yoga mat like I have right now, because my wife took my good one, um, roll up the mat. So I'm in this half kneel position now. You have two options here. I prefer the second option. So in order to get up, I need to have both legs in line. So a lot of times people will take this right knee and swivel it in the back. So now I'm in a half kneel position with my left arm up. Or what I like to do instead, because sometimes like in this case where the flooring is not the best for my knee and the last thing I want to do is add like sheer axial rotational force into it. Um, I can't remember the term that they use in strong first, but I call it closing the door. So in this half kneel position, I'm going to take my left leg and sweep it in front of me. And now I close the door of my hip into a half kneel position and now I can lunge forward up into the get up position and again I know I'm kind of out of frame but you get the idea I'm standing up straight now I can come back and the way to come back is I'm going into a reverse lunge into my half kneel position now I gotta open up this leg now same way I came up I'm pushing my hips back into my heel into a hinge and my right hand is coming onto the ground. From here, I'm gonna shift my hips forward. And now from there, I can slide my leg out to that seated position. And again, that right hand is gonna slide out, back to the elbow and back down to the ground. Now, we did a shit ton of stuff here, like a lot. And there's a couple things we need to note when the eyes change. So. If I'm starting back up, I'm on my back, I get to the elbow, I get to the hand, slide the hand in, I lift up those hips, I bring that leg underneath. I now shift my hips into that hip hinge, and I'm still looking up, I'm still looking at my eyes. I now push my hips forward into that hinge, and from this position, now I can look forward. Now this bell is above me, and it's just like if I was doing a shoulder press, I'm not looking every single rep above my head because I know it's there. I'm stabilized, I'm good to go. It's kind of like the kettlebell arm bar. Like I'm not looking at it, I'm resting my head forward because I know it's there. But you know, it, I don't know where it is in space and time, but my shoulder has enough stability to keep it there. So at this moment, when I get to this half kneel position, now my eyes can go forward because now I need to see where I'm gonna go. So if I'm gonna choose the option of closing the door, I'm still looking forward, and now I'm coming up into that standing position. Now, coming down, we want to recreate everything we did in order to come uh, back down on the way up. So if I am in this started position, left arm up, this right leg comes back into that half kneel position by going into a reverse lunge, this leg will open up back again and now my eyes look back up because now I'm going to push my hips back into that hip hinge. My right hand is here, right? Like this is the other thing too. A lot of people make a mistake. Wherever my right knee is pointing at this uh, spot, 
is where my hand should go. A lot of people from here end up kind of just like falling over like this. And again, we're using that QL and uh, side oblique that's not as strong as your hips. So utilize your hips. These guys are strong. If you're deadlifting, lunging, whatever it is, like utilize your hips. So what I like to do is like slide my hand down the crease of where my hip is down towards my knee. And that gives me a direction of where this right hand should go. So at this point I'm looking, I'm sliding my hand down to the ground and I shift my weight forward into the shoulder. Now I'm still stable. And from here I can lift that leg through and I'm still looking at my hand, slide that hand out, elbow, I'm still looking at my hand and back down. So that is the entire getup. Now, the other thing we need to mention is when you do get to the point of, you know, of weight, there is a proper way of picking up a kettlebell. And this is probably the biggest pet peeve that I hate that I see that people do. So I'm going to grab my 12 kilo here. And it's on the right side. What I see people do is like, oh, I'm going to do the get up. I'm going to lie down. I'm going to grab it. What happened there? What I just hit? I literally went from this position. I put my arm out. And by lifting it like almost like a semi bicep curl, I'm loading all my exter uh, external rotators and the inside of my elbow with all the stress to bring it in here. Do you really think that's gonna feel good over and over and over? The way to do it, like I don't know why people don't see this as an easier option to keep your joints healthy. So you wanna roll over to your right side if you're doing you know, the right arm like we've been doing this whole time. Your hand comes underneath, your left hand goes over top. From here, you're gonna roll over with the weight towards your chest. So much easier. And like you can literally lift a hundred pound kettlebell if you want it in that position. From here, you're gonna press up with both hands. And with kettlebells, um, you can move this guy into different positions on the forearm to make it feel a little bit better. Because sometimes, you know, again, bony anatomy, um, the size of the kettlebell, the, you know, the writing on the kettlebell, if it's sticking out, like it all depends. So you want to adjust it as much as possible. The other thing from here that I see is when people are not gripping the kettlebell properly, they end up doing this with their wrist. This is the worst thing you can do for your wrist. So keep it neutral and squeeze the crap out of it, right? Say I did my get up, I'm back down. I'm gonna bring it back to my center of the chest and then roll over to place it down. Now, in order for you to transfer it over, and I won't showcase it right now because it'll probably destroy my floor and my wife will get mad at me. You're gonna go hand over top of the kettlebell and your right hand underneath in this position and you would drag it around to the other side and now you would pick it up the same way. By doing this, you are going to save a lot on the shoulder. You're gonna save a lot when it comes to shoulder health, strength, whatever it is. So I'm pretty proud of myself that I got this done under an hour uh, because I can talk about it forever. But I'm happy that I finally got this together because the getup is one of those really, really, really uh, complex exercises that needs a lot of coaching. And on top of that, like this is just a generic tutorial if I had someone in front of me, for sure their getup's gonna look a lot different or have different cues or have different options based on what's going on with their anatomy. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm more than happy to respond. Um, like and subscribe this video if you're watching. Um, I'm gonna be doing a lot more videos because people have been watching it, so, which is awesome. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Hit the show notes if you're listening. Click the video to watch it if you want to see everything I demonstrated. Um, add me on Facebook and Instagram. I post a lot of video content. And uh, you guys have a wonderful day. I miss you guys. I love you guys. Till next time.